position on The Voice with me is Liberal Member for Menzies, Keith Wallahan. Keith is also the Deputy Chair of the Joint Select Committee on The Voice. So you've got a, a significant job coming up on that. Peter Dutton, today it's a big moment because up until now you've been calling for more detail. He now calls it the Prime Minister's divisive Canberra voice. So this is full throttle against it, isn't it? What can I say? This was a momentous day for our party. No one pretended it was an easy decision and people went into that room with good faith and good heart for our Indigenous Australians. I think we've come out of today with a lot more yeses than noes. I know that the line will be that it's a hard no. It's not. We're saying yes to the Australian people having a say. The Australian people will decide. There's not politicians, not any particular political party. We've said yes to recognition. That's important, to constitutional recognition. And Peter Dutton has reached out to the Prime Minister to say, let's work together on that. We've said yes to uh, the committee process, which I'm the deputy chair of. That has important work to do. Um, the government has proposed a model, and I, I would like to see that tested and hopefully at the end of it refined. And then in terms of consultation, we're saying yes to consultation, but not in the constitution. We're talking about a legislated rural and regional voice. And you're saying potentially this committee, of which you're a part, could refine the amendment that's being put to the referendum. But having said that, you've already announced you're opposing the voice regardless. It, is, it, is it premature so. then, the position announced today? It's, it's not. Can I give you an, a comparable example? I, I was uh, the coalition lead on the National Anti-Corruption Commission Joint Select Committee. A bill was presented that was the government's policy. Uh, we had a position to that was tested and adjusted through the process. And the government ultimately proposed a different model, which got bipartisan support. Um, so these processes can lead to the government adjusting their model. And, and if the government has an open mind and an open heart, I hope they will look at the next four to six weeks. And if there's risk that is presented from the evidence, whether it's oral or written, I'd like to think they would look at that. Do you think there's a scenario where you could get bipartisanship? Because this, as you say, this is more yes than no, is the way you put it and Susan mm. Lee put it. But in, when it comes to the fundamental question of a referendum, Peter Dutton sounds adamant. There is absolutely no budging on that. He's not going to back a federal voice to parliament. There is, so the two limbs that have been put by the Prime Minister, he said it's a modest proposal, of recognition and consultation. There's bipartisanship on recognition. So I think that offer has been made by my party and it would be great to see that that was accepted. I think we can have recognition done, a bipartisan approach to that. In terms of consultation, there's, there's a different view about how we achieve that. And that's very unlikely, though, isn't it? It's very unlikely that the Prime Minister is going to waver. He's listened. This is the other point Peter Dutton was making. It's the Prime Minister's divisive Canberra voice. It's actually the Indigenous Working Group. They've come up with the proposal off the back of the Uluru Statement from the Heart. So hasn't the Prime Minister simply listened to representatives of Australia's First Peoples? I, I can't speak for what happened in the party room, but you can understand that so many of our party room have significant percentages of Indigenous Australians and they're listening to them too. So they come to this having heard from the people on the ground. Of course, the working group presented a model, but in the end, it's the government that puts forward the wording and it's the parliament that is sovereign and it's the government then will put that question to the people. If there's constitutional risk, we, we all have a duty to be honest about that because in the end, when the people make a decision and we wake up the day after. Uh, in a democracy, the people always get it right, but we have a duty to make sure that they're fully informed because it's a serious decision that we're asking Australians to make. The Prime Minister, uh, the Prime Minister is obviously committed to this yes campaign. The opposition leader, by the sounds of it, calling it a divisive Canberra voice, is going to be running very strongly on the no campaign. Are you comfortable with that sort of language being called a divisive Canberra voice? Well, the way the wording that has been used at, by the Prime Minister has been disappointing. So the Prime Minister has not stood up and defended the right for Australians to vote no. He hasn't 
defended the right for people to ask questions. I was in the parliament when reasonable questions were put to him and the reaction was visceral. It was visceral, uh, almost disgust that we dared to ask it. And then we see in the papers a concession that the questions were reasonable. In fact, the answers were as we suspected, but the prime minister did not want to give those answers in the parliament. I think the prime minister is the leader of this nation. He has a duty to, to, to lead by example and show that this debate can be conducted with respect and dignity for all sides. Some of your colleagues want to support The Voice and want to support the Yes campaign. Should frontbenchers be allowed that same opportunity, as was the case in the Republican referendum, where those who supported the Yes campaign, like Peter Costello, were able to do so? Well, when you have, by convention, when you have a party position, of course, backbenchers are free to speak freely and vote freely. Uh, but in the end, frontbenchers, when they walk into the ballot, it's still their own personal decision. Um, Peter Dutton gets one vote, I get one vote, and every Australian watching this gets one vote. That's the way it should be. But when you're talking about how we actually campaign for it, and my party has taken a firm position, particularly on the voice to the executive and the constitutional risks that come with that. Keith Wallahan, member for Menzies, thanks. Appreciate your time. Thank you for having me.